Hello everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. Always so grateful that you come along with me as we study this book of Galatians and knowing that God wants to teach us his truth. So let's go to him in prayer today and be grateful for his word that he provides every day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can share together. I thank you for each of the people who are listening uh, to this podcast and ask that you would bless them with your spirit. Bless us with your spirit, O oh Lord, and teach us your truth as you said you would, Lord, and empower us to live according to that truth so that we might be pleasing unto you. And Lord, we're going to bless you today as you bless us with the teaching of your word. And we'll thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Not Weary in Well-Doing. It's taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 9. In chapter 6 of Galatians, Paul the Apostle has told the church members to restore one another when they are taken in a fall. He has encouraged them to bear one another's burdens, and by doing so, they would fulfill the law of Christ. They were to think of themselves as nothing and be busy about their own work and worry less about what others do. In addition, they were to minister to the teachers in the word. And remember, the law of reciprocity is real, and therefore they should sow to the Spirit and not to the flesh. In verse 9 of the book of Galatians in chapter 6, Paul continues his exhortations to them as he shares about their work. He wrote, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. After all the directions Paul has given for the behavior of for the people of Galatia, they might tend to get wearied from their work. He begins this verse with, and let us not be weary in well-doing. The Greek word for weary is ekakeo, which means to be utterly spiritless, to be wearied out, exhausted. Whenever there is work in the kingdom of God, there's also a tendency to be wearied from it. Jesus himself spoke of the importance of rest as his disciples returned from working in the kingdom. In the Gospel of Mark, in chapter 6 and verses 30 through 32, we read, And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat, and they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Often there is so much to do that people do not take the time to simply rest, and this may lead to weariness, tiredness, and even dread of the work that is done. Paul says, do not allow weariness in well-doing. Paul adds, for in due season we shall reap. There is a harvest waiting for those who sow good seed. It may not appear right away, but it nonetheless is there. The idea of due season is at just the right time, exactly when it should be, and during the perfect season. God knows when that timing occurs. And like the farmer who waits patiently for his crop to produce, the well-doing that is sown will yield an abundant fold some day. The key to seeing this harvest lies in Paul's last four words in this verse, if we faint not. Since he employed the word if, we may realize there is a possibility that we might faint, which means quit, relinquish responsibilities, and give up on our well-doing. For those who work steadily in doing well, there is a tendency to never rest. And when this occurs, burnout tiredness, relaxing, and letting go of ever doing well again can become the norm. Many who used to do well never do so again, and therefore they never see the harvest awaiting because they have fainted on the job. As we consider this verse, we might ask ourselves, are we overworked? Do we tend to never come apart into a desert place and rest a while? Have we found doing well for others a drudgery or like a job? Is our life filled with so much good during good doing that we are wearying ourselves to the point of despair? Perhaps our meditation before the Lord today should be to ask Him 
if it is time for us to take a break, take a rest, and refresh ourselves so that we will not faint in doing that which he has called us to do. Next time, Paul will share with us about doing good to others. So read ahead and let us join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.